be the same again. We cannot have an encounter with God and remain the same. Moses went to the mountain as an ordinary man, but when he descended the mountain, the glory was upon him. The Bible said that could not even look at his eyes. He had to use a fame because of the glory. Cover us with the glory. Cover us with the kabod. And cover us with the shakaim. The Papa Messiah. The doxa. Who you are and what you have. Holy, holy. Masamaya. Spirit move over us. Just like the days of the Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. And the United Kingdom shall never be the same. Because when God shows up, something must disappear. When God steps in, the devil must step out. When God steps in, poverty must step out. Sickness and disease, no weapon fought against us shall be able. Apostle Paul says, see now, I'm going 
to Jerusalem. He said, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. But he said, but the Holy Spirit has, has revealed that to me that persecutions and tribulations are waiting for me, city after city. But he said, but none of these things shall move me. If only I can finish my race with joy. Beloved, nobody told us that the road will be easy. But he told us it's going to be possible. God doesn't make it easy. He makes it possible. And faith is the substance of everything that we hope for. And if God be for us, who can be against us? In all these things, we are more than conquerors. And we are persuaded and convinced that we in that personal life, this present of things to come, shall separate us from the love of God. Amen! Hallelujah! Bishop. As I was sitting here, the Lord says to me, it's not a coincidence that you came here in no. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to say November, I want to say no. Because no. November is the only month that starts with no. <laughs> Hallelujah! I want us to say no to poverty. No to death. Say no. Give your neighbor high five and say no. Say no. 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 until you agree. Yeah. 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 You must hear me now. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't know us when we are quiet. Yes. Yeah. He wait for us to speak. Yeah. Because the devil is not all knowing. Mm. Only ah. God knows my yeah. move before I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now the devil wait for me to move then he command. Mm. And that is why the Bible says now don't confess your conflicts and yeah. Confess your faith and it says, yes. No, let the wind say, I am sorry. To feel sick is normal, to feel discouraged is normal, but it becomes dangerous when you verbalize it. Come on, guys. Sometimes we feel like dying, but we say we are alive. Someone tell your neighbor, don't confess your condition, confess your position. Yeah, yeah, because your condition is subjected to change. You see, you see there's, there's a boy who went to school and he was told that Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain. And he grew up knowing that knowing that Kilimanjaro is the tallest mountain. And one day when he was in the plane flying, he asked the neighbor and said, Show me Kilimanjaro. And for the first time, Kilimanjaro was pointed down. And he said, no, that is a wrong mountain because my teacher used it to point it up. And the man sitting next to him says, no, the problem is not the mountain, it's the position you're pointing from. Hey! Because you and your teacher were pointing it from down, hey! but me and you, we are pointing it from above. Hey! And that is why God is not changing the size of the mountain, he's changing your perspective. And the size. Come on, keep all the points. Different interpretation. Have you ever been in a situation when others see death and you see life? Yes. Yes. You are looking at the same mountain from a different position. God is not going to change your condition, He's going to change your position. Look at your name and say, My position is changing. It's not that you are losing friends, it's just your position. It's changing. But now, when you want to know when you have arrived at the right position, you count how many opposition. Because now opposition can reveal the power of your position. And now the Bible says, but when the enemy shall come like the flood, the Spirit of God 
will raise up the standard, which means the standard is not raised until, you know, you are not raised from the classroom level, you are raised from the exam room level, yeah, because in the classroom the teacher is talking, but in the exam room you are talking, because now the teacher keeps quiet in the exam, because the teacher spoke to you in the classroom, now which means we don't rise when there is no fight, we rise when there is a war, because our promotion is in the flood, our promotion is in the battle, God will never promote you if there is no opposition, and the Bible says when the enemy shall come, when the enemy comes we learn how to overcome, because the Bible says we are more than conquerors, and we are persuaded, convinced that neither death nor life, things present or things to come shall separate us from the love of God. Let me tell you, if you want to check the size of your destiny, you must check the size of what is fighting. I have learned to use my opposition as a soul now to check the gender of my baby. If I know the gender, I can buy the right colors. Ah. I preach it to Lord. Look your neighbor and say, I know what I'm carrying. Yeah. Ah. I believe that the church is moving from I receive to I conceive. Yeah. Ah. Because it is dangerous to receive what you never conceive. before he takes care of you. Uh, you better carry it. Uh, before it pays your bill, uh, you must carry it. And when you conceive it, uh, it messes up with your feet. Uh, when you carry it, it messes up with your diet. Uh, yeah, you cannot bend like other women because uh, you are carrying something. Even if you like alcohol, you don't drink it because of what you are carrying. Because the day you understand what is in you, uh, you will never just put anything in you. Uh, because you are conscious of your baby. There are friends that you must disconnect from for the sake of your baby. Amen! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. 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 You know, three things were lost in the book of Luke. And the Bible says there was a lost coin. Yeah. And there was a lost sheep. And there was a lost son. And now here is the mystery. When the, when the sheep was lost, the Bible says the shepherd went out and looked for it. But when the coin was lost, the Bible says the woman closed the door. Because now the woman understood that the coin cannot walk by itself. Yeah, you, must, you must know what you have lost so that you don't run for something that is still in the house. You may not see it, but it's still in the house. It's just a dust. And the Bible says, before she sit with the broom, she switch on the light. Because now it is dangerous to look for it in darkness. And that is why we cannot impose holiness when we don't push Christ in the house of people. Because we need light illumination so that we can find the coin. Amen, 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 amen. The problem is that before it mess up your room. Because yeah. while you're sitting, there is a dust. Ah. And some people see you in the dust, they think you are mad, but you are looking for it. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I better stop preaching until I find it. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh my God. I better stop worshiping until I find my God. Hey. And I'm here in the United hey. Kingdom. To say to you, I'm gonna help you to find your coin. Some of you, you lost it because of people you trusted. You lost your coin. And you try to move on, but you are missing your coin. And sometimes after preaching, you are still empty. Because if it's not there, it's not there. Don't fake it. Cry for it. When the prodigal son was lost, and you know, you know what the devil did with the prodigal? He could not delete the son, he could only add prodigal. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my pastor! 
You know, because now prodigal was his behavior, but son was his, his inheritance. You may, you may not have what they have, but you are a son. Come on, give your neighbor a high five and say, I'm still a son. Like Ronaldo, and they will begin to play around. But 
Why strikers? They don't watch the wingers when they play around. When they see that the wingers are pulling defenders out, they run to the box yeah. to position themselves to score. Because they know that when the winger goes far, he's about to square. Mm. Now, the ball squared is not enough if, if there's no man to score. Yeah. Which means even if I can preach, if you don't receive, I'm wasting my time. Ah! You know, when you watch a soccer match, you realize that when you are kicked outside the 18 area, people are allowed to stand before you defend us. But when you are kicked in the 18 area, you are left with the goalkeeper. It is called the penalty. Yeah. Now, which means the closer you are kicked, the easier, easier you can score. Amen! Oh! Go, 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 go. Now, which means if you want, let the devil kick you, but in God, let the oh. gossip you stay in the empty. Stay in the presence of the Lord. And say, Pastor is the man who dwells in the second place of the most high God. And many people say, I shall stay in the presence of God. And of all, when you watch a soccer match in, in our country, people are allowed to come with whistles. Yes. They can come and blow the whistles and make noise. But it's like the players are trained to differentiate between the whistles of the spectator and the whistles of the ah. Ah. Oh my God! Oh my God! The reason you are so discouraged is because you don't know the voice. Oh! And it's when you are confused by the noise. Ah. Oh! Prophet! Sometimes when they say stop, this referee can say play on. Oh! Ah. If God says play on, preach even when they talk. Ah. Amen! Oh, I give your neighbor high five and say the game is still on. The game is
you have identity crisis. You see, the lack of revelation makes you to compete with what God has completed. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Our journey is not the journey forward. Man of God is the journey backward. Because God says to Jeremiah, yeah. don't say to me you are a child. Yeah. Yeah. Because the child is from the point of your mother's womb, but the prophet is from the point of my womb. Oh. Ah, ah. Now you are counting from the wrong calendar. Yeah. You are counting from the calendar of the flesh, but before you were formed. Yeah. Yeah. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, but you yeah. you. And I made you a prophet before yeah. you prophesied. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when I preach this message, normally I say there was a womb but before the womb. Mm. Now, which means 1980, 1960, you were not born, you were released. Wow. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. And, and that is why Mordecai said to Esther, who knows that you were made a queen for times such as this? Because there are people who were powerful in their time, but they couldn't survive over time. Oh my God. You were preserved for times such as this. Because you are the material for this time. And there is no way that you can fail because you were designed for this time. The challenges of this hour cannot kill you because you are the material designed for times such as this. When God saw 2018, he saw somebody like you. Paul couldn't survive today. Only me and you because we were designed for this time of technology. Can I say this thing? If the devil couldn't stop me from the womb of God to the womb of my mother, from the womb of my mother to the earth, how can he stop me from the earth to my dear? Can you look at me and say you are unstoppable? Yes. Yeah. If the devil was powerful, you were not supposed to have been born. But for the mere fact that you were born, which means you have conquered some things. Glory to Jesus! Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh. Amen, 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 amen! You, you know, you know, men of, you know, men of God, the Bible says God, God took dust. Dust came from the ground. And he breathed to it and it became man. Adam begin to walk upon the dust that he came from. When Adam was standing, the dust was underneath him, but he was made out of dust. Which means God is so powerful that He can take you out of it and put you above it. Hallelujah! My God! Oh my God! My God! When I see a South African boy preaching now in Birmingham, I'm coming from the dust. I am walking on top of the dust. You see, men of God, when Moses came to the Red Sea, God says, What you have in your hand? Moses stretched the hand and the sea was open. When Joshua came to Jordan, the Bible says, Those who carry the ark, they step into the river, and the river's open. When Elijah came to the Red Sea Jordan, he took the garment and he striked the waters and they were open. And when Elijah, it is amazing that when Elijah opened Jordan, God quickly closed it, knowing exactly that Elijah is coming there. Ah. Oh. Oh. The question is, why God doesn't leave it open for Elijah? Yes. Yes. He, he said, if you don't come with the garment, you're going to start. Yeah. Oh. Don't follow the kind of the garment and you don't come with the garment. Yeah. 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 Powerful. Hey. Because every battle need a man. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. 
But when Jesus came upon the sea, he doesn't open the sea. God is walking upon it. Oh, yes. You see, you know, God, I love the book of John, chapter 11. You know, the earlier verse says Lazarus was sick. And Jesus got the message early, but he never responded. Amen. When Jesus was glory, he allowed you to die. Oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was called when Lazarus was sick, but he never responded. He wanted him to die. He never attended the funeral because he wanted to use it as the revival. Yeah. Oh my God! And when he came, they said, Lord, if you were here, if you were here, you will not have died. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Amen! I'm not just resurrecting, I am a resurrection. And life. And he who believes me, even if he's dead, he will rise. They say, No, we know he will rise when the dead are rising. Which means they had the faith for the past and they had the faith for the future, but they struggle to have the faith for the present. Ah, Rudy. <laughs> when he came to the grave, man of God, let me say this Jesus raised three people from the dead. He raised the daughter of Jairus yeah. in the house. Mm -hmm. He raised the son of the widow in Naim yeah. on the way. Yes. And he raised Lazarus in the grave. Yeah. Ah. Now, which means Jesus dealt with the death in the house, the death in the street, and death in the grave. Ah, 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 ah. Amen. Amen. Now, as far as death is concerned, Jesus has covered it all. <laughs> Hallelujah! In the grave. But now look, look at the way he did it. When he came to the house, he found people crying, but they were crying for nonsense. And he chased them out. Because uh -huh. there are wrong people in your room that you will never rise until they are chased. Oh, my God! When they left in the room, the Bible says Jesus touched again and said, Tell it a call. Yeah. When he went to the funeral of Naid, he waited for the procession before it left them house to the graveyard, he stopped it at the gate. The Bible says he touched the coffin. In the house he touched the girl. Here he, he touched the coffin. Oh. <laughs> hey. And when he touched the coffin, he said to the mother, stop crying. Yeah. And how can you say I must stop crying when my baby is still in the coffin? Because when God builds your faith, He doesn't give you answers. He wants you to praise when there is no answer. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. Hallelujah! And He said, "Young man," and, and they said the woman was a widow, which means there was a second. This was the second death. Yes. The first death was the death of his of her husband. Yeah. And because Jesus never showed up when the husband died, the devil thought that Jesus is never coming. Because there are things that will die and God will allow you to bury them, but not for the second time. Hallelujah! Give your neighbor high five and say, not for the second time. Not for the second time. Oh, the devil cannot kill it again. Oh. But when he came to the grave of Lazarus, he never touched anything. He spoke the word. He said, Lazarus come forth. All the two that were raised, Jesus never mentioned their names. Oh! It's only when he came to Lazarus when he called him by his name. The man of God was talking about calling him by his name. Why Lazarus was called by his name is because when he was alive, he used to call Jesus' name. You are alive when you die, we call hey. your name. Oh, Can we show Jesus in the house? Yeah. Can we show him?
cause will run to it and they shall be saved. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm going to ask, forgive me, I'm just loaded up. I'm just downloading this stuff. When Peter was in the boat, the boat was sinking. And the Bible said Jesus came walking upon the water. Now, which means what, what, what was above their boat was under the feet of Jesus. <laughs> which means what is covering your boat is not covering your God. I, I, man. Your, your boat is in danger, but your God is walking upon your storm. Hallelujah. How many people say, I see Jesus above my situation? <laughs> Sharp of our faith. No, 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 man of God, you have to understand that the boat it was leaking, but at least it was safe. Hallelujah. But now, if you want salvation, you must step out of human safety. The Bible says, when Peter saw him, he said, Lord. Been messed up in time, I've been destroyed, I've been manipulated. If it is you, hmm. speak the word. Prophet. Don't tell me my phone number, speak the word. Yes. 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 Don't say a woman is a female and you say it's a prophecy. <laughs> Some said he was a ghost, but Peter says, I will only know him when he speaks. Ah, oh my God. Ah, hey. And when he said, Come, Peter, step out of safety. And he started to walk on the water. But what is key here was not just walking, it was focus. Because the Bible says, When he started to look at the wind, he started to sink. Sinking is the result of looking at the wind. Yeah. You are only strong when you are focused on Jesus. Amen. Amen. When you begin to count your troubles, you will be troubled. But when you count your blessing, you shall rise. Hallelujah. Am I preaching for the right people? Amen. But here's the mystery. The Bible says when Peter realized that he was sinking, he shouted. He said, Lord, save me. And the Bible says when he was sinking, Jesus never spoke this time. Jesus stretched the hand. Pick him up, ah. which means the first face is not the hand, it's the mouth. Amen. Oh my God! Now, which means nowadays people are preaching the hand of God more than the mouth. Of God. Aye, man. Oh man! Oh man! That is why people are coming for the hand because they want hand out. Aye. Ah. Ah. And that is why if you don't give them anything tangible, they change the church. Ah, oh my God! Because they want something they can touch. Yeah. But those who have obeyed the mouth, when they sing, they shall see the hand. <laughs> because the hand of God protects what the mouth of God has declared. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Am I preaching to the right? Amen. Oh, that's too much. Can I just say a few things and I, I, I sit down? I just have a lot of stuff. Can we quickly look at the book of First Samuel? Men of God, I don't know if my time is still there. I want to read this quickly. Hey. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Because of time, I want to just quote the scriptures. When you read First Samuel chapter 4, from verse 10, let me read quickly and I'll wrap it up. Are you still blessed? Yes. Can you give me a bit of a sound here? I don't know if, if, if it's me missing something here. So, verse 10 says, chapter 4, verse Samuel. So the first time for Israel, fought, Israel was defeated, and every man who fled to his tent. It was a very great defeat for 30,000 foot soldiers of Israel fell. Also, the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of 
Ella, Hophni and Phineas were killed. Now a man from the tribe of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh that same day with his clothes torn, dust on his head, as a sign of mourning over the disaster. When he arrived, Ella was sitting on his seat by the road, keeping watch because his heart was anxious about the ark of God. When the men arrived to report the news in the city, everyone in the city cried out to God for help. When Ella heard the noise of the outcry, he asked, What is the noise of this uproar? And the man came hurriedly and told him, Ella. Now, Ella was 98 years old. His eyes were dim so that he could not see. The man said to Ella, I have come from the battle line. Indeed, I escaped from the battle line today. Ella said, How did things go, my son? The messenger replied, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and they also been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons Hophni and Phineas are dead and the ark of God is taken. When he mentioned, listen to this, when he mentioned the ark, Ella fell off the seat backwards by the side of the city gate. His neck was broken. He died for he was old and heavy. He had judged Israel for 40 years. Now his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, was pregnant and was about to give birth. So when she heard the news that the ark of God had been taken and that her father-in-law and her husband had died, she kneeled down and gave birth because her labor pains began. And about the time of her death, following the sudden birth, the woman attending her said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have given birth to a son. But she did not pay answer or pay any attention. And she named the boy Ichabod, saying, The glory has left Israel because of the ark of God has been taken and because of the death of her father-in-law and her husband. She said, The glory has left Israel for the ark of God has been taken. Say Amen. amen. Now, beloved, you have to quickly realize that after defeat, the second target was the ark. Because the devil wants to frustrate us so that we may lose his presence. And, 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 and when the ark is stolen, whatever we give birth to is Ichabod. You know, the problem is that you can still give birth when the ark is not there. But you give birth to Ichabod. But now I want to look at Eli. When he heard about the death of his son, he was still alive. But when he heard about the ark, he died. Because he understood that I better lose my son as long as I have the presence. You know the problem we are crying for wrong things. What is important is the presence of God. Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, take us away. We refuse to move in your absence. We refuse to pray for the sick in your absence. We refuse to prophesy in your absence. Even when the chairs are full of people, we need a house to be full of the glory. We are not going to be excited about attendance. We need a person. Amen. 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 In Kabot, the glory has departed. Emmanuel, God is with us. The daughter in law of Ella gave birth to Ikabot. Mary gave birth to Emmanuel. When that woman gave birth, the glory left. When Mary gave birth, the glory arrived. Amen. Am I preaching to the right? Hallelujah. We need the men of our generation. Amen. Who will give birth to Emmanuel? Hallelujah. We are tired of going to services where the glory has departed. Yeah. Where man is glorified. Back 
quote this verse before I go to chapter 5 because that is my message and I pray and I, and I leave. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Exodus 14, 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you. Just hold your peace. And remain calm. If I'm in my country, I say chila, chila. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, chila, chila. Relax. When they gossip about you, chila. The Lord will fight. Hallelujah. Most of us, we are wounded because we are fighting the battle that is not ours. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15 it says the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. Hallelujah. Now men of God, let us read chapter 5 of the of the same first Psalm. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Do you know men of God, these people of Ashdod? Yeah. They are the people who were left by Joshua. <laughs> when Joshua was destroying cities, he left the people of Gaza. He left the people of Gad. And he left the people of Ashdod. Because he said that they were small nations. Because Joshua never knew that what is innocent to him can be dangerous to the coming generation. Oh my God! There are things that if we don't tackle now, they will tackle our kids. Yes. Amen. Amen. If we don't kill them now, they will kill our generation. Mm. The people of Ashdod captured the ark. The people of Gaza took off the eyes of Samson. And the people of Gad gave birth to Goliath. He 
was a teaching type. Men who killed their children, their wives, and men who acted healing, but they are not. It's a matter of time you will explode. When you put water in the boiler and you set the fire, after some time, the water will boil. But if you no one take care of it, it kills the lid. The lid is kicked by the pressure inside. And some people explode it's because they've been carrying too much. And some of you, you think when you come to church at the hall, you are healed. You can die preaching. You can die worshiping. Hallelujah. You will never conquer anything that you don't want to confront. You must face your devils and face your weakness. And you must close that door and be real to yourself. And say, I'm acting big, but I'm like mama. I have a garment, but behind the garment, I have leprosy. David says, How? Oh, are you talking? Are you also part of this? Because he thought the man was healed, but he was not. You know, some people, you are married to a time bomb. Unfortunately, it explodes in your presence. But it was not said there, it was said many years ago. But most of the people who get hurt are those who try to disarm a bomb. Hmm. Because it exploded into your face. How many of you are wounded when you were trying to help? Because you thought the person with a nice suit is the right is the person you know. There is somebody behind the suit. There is somebody behind makeup. There is somebody behind the nice clothes. There is a perceived me and there is an original me. I can decorate the perceived me when the real me is dying. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. It's on. You, you see, man of God, in the Old Testament, when you come, you remember when the people came to do, David asked them, Are you coming with war or peace? Now in the Old Testament, Mama, we were, they were not saying, How are you? They were saying, How is your peace? Before you, you become friends, just check how is that person peace. Because if you don't check the peace of that person, they can leave you in pieces. <laughs> okay, let me just close this. Now, Morugir, the Philistines took the ark of God and they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. They took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and set it beside the image of Dagon, their chief idol. Somebody say Dagon. When the people of Ashdod got up early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face, on the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and returned him to his place. But when they got up early the next morning, behold, Dagon had again, somebody say again. again. No, I don't hear you say again. Again. Fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. Somebody say before the ark of the Lord. And his head and both palms of his hands were lying cut off on the threshing threshold. Only the trunk portion of the idol of Dagon was left on him. May I wrap this thing up quickly? In that room, Mama, there was no pastor. In that room, there was no keyboard. In that room, there was no apostle. In that room, there was no church. It was Dagon and God. Yes! There is a level where gods must fight their battles. Hey! Look to your name and say, let God fight his battles. <laughs> you are wounded because you try to defend God. You are wounded because you try to fight for God. This God is powerful. Where is Allah? Put it before the altar and go into the sleep. Put it before the altar in the morning. Somebody say it. Oh, 
powerful, but it's not a moon. You can destroy the devil. A moon. The Bible says we pick to the drop from the night, but surely. Yeah. Go 
God does he need help? In the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah showed up and Moses showed up. But after some times, they disappeared. And the Bible says Jesus was left alone. Oh my God. Jesus is powerful. Amen. When he stood in the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we say, Lord, here is my situation? Oh, I'm tired of carrying this thing. I want us to go to God today and say, Father, fight for me. I'm tired of fighting for myself. I've tried to do it myself. Everyone pray. Put it before them.
talking about God. Uh, I'm tired of fighting your okay? uh, I'm wounded because I was not to fight your uh, okay? uh, Let God fight for himself. Uh, yeah.
Dagon cannot stand the presence of God. Everything that was attacking you, it's under attack right now. Come on, somebody, let God fight it. If they raise it, God will break it. If the devil try to raise it, the second time will be worse than the first. Holy, 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 holy. Put it before God. You cannot carry it. Your heart was not designed to carry it. You will die for time. It's your fight. Let go! Let go! Let go! I know we are out of time, but I feel, Bishop, before I go, there are people here who must release up some people. You are bitter, you are carrying hands. But God says somebody must release. You, you cannot serve God because of what they have done to you. And you act healed, but you are bleeding. Internal bleeding is killing the church. Smiling but dying. Singing but dying. Preaching but dying. Put it before the ark. Let go. Take over the bed. I'm not going to call anyone, but wherever you are, I want us to release them from our hearts. Just release those people who have done you wrong. For the sake of where you are going. God says if we you carry it is gonna be a poison. That anger and bitterness is not good for your spirit. It will poison your anointing. It will poison your gift. Release those who did you wrong. Even if you have done them right, they hurt you and you are still bleeding. Can you pray a prayer and say, Father, I forgive them anyhow. I'm bleeding, but I'm forgiving. Come on, everyone, pray. If you feel that it's you who is carrying somebody, you know there is somebody you trusted with your life, but they have done you so wrong. And every time you see them, it's like you are dying in your inside. Can you release them from your heart? God says, release them, forgive them. Come on, somebody, pray, pray, pray. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Do it for you. Do it for you. No mask. Do it for yourself. It's limiting your move. It's limiting your mind. Release them. Even when you are still bitter. Even if they are not sorry about it, forgive them. Lord, I forgive them anyhow. Put it before the ark. Let God fight for you. Let Jehovah fight for you. Uh, you are not called to defend yourself. Heaven will defend you. Joseph never tried to defend himself. He went to prison innocent. He went to prison innocent until God released him as a prime minister. When time is right, you shall rule over those who sold you. When he saw his brothers, he said, You intended it for bad, but God intended it for God. Forgive them. Mama, forgive them. Papa, forgive them. My brother, release them. Your destiny is greater than those who have disappointed you.